Hi, uh, my name is David Najib Kassir, and I am an artist and one of the participating artists uh, that you'll find in the show, uh, Tears Shaped Like Watermelon Seeds. If there's one word I could describe um, what this show is or what's happening right now, um, it would obviously be genocide. My work has revolved around... Uh, the Middle East, particularly Syria, where uh, my family is from. Um, my mother, my mother is from Syria. Uh, my father was Iraqi, so I have a um, you know a long history uh, culturally uh, with with country, countries that have dealt with um, war and chaos and um, U.S. involvement. Um, and uh, imperialism when things ha- started happening I mean things have been happening in, in, in Palestine for over you know 75, 76 years um, I've been aware of it you know um, all my, my whole adult life uh, you know I can recall it being discussed uh, among my cousins when I was in Syria you know my family and I have always been pro-Palestine um, uh, we've always been aware of the apartheid I've been seeing what's been happening there for a very long time you know all these sort of things that you see on uh, social media you know of course it wasn't to the level that we see now um but i've been seeing it for a very long time on social media you know i I recall seeing reports and uh live footage of uh when uh members of the press uh were uh hit by snipers purposely uh you know two years ago um i recall seeing um stories about uh children who uh, were shot at as target practice by the IOF, uh, you know, as, as they were playing soccer. I remember uh, telling my girlfriend as I was watching one of the videos, and I said, Israel has been sort of been hiding cover for the all, all the atrocities that they have uh, committed for so many years. But eventually these videos are going to go viral and uh, they're going to get picked up more and people will see see all the racism and, and crimes against humanity that they have committed for, you know, decades and decades now. I, IOF soldiers just pushing old old ladies down as as they were storming a funeral um, of a child. You know, I, I thought I thought this day would come. I mean, I never imagined it would be as bad as what we see now. You know, I I, I, I understand resistance. I understand. You know, a lot of Americans don't understand what desperation is and and um, and 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 the idea of. Um, having breaking points I kind of I kind of knew that it, a day like what we saw in October would come and as soon as it did I knew that there was going to be just the worst retaliation and that's what we've seen um, I mean I've been painting images of um you know, uh, destroyed buildings and homes uh, for, you know, and refugees for, you know, over the last 10 years now dealing with Syria. But I tell you, you know, anything that I've seen in that time, it, it, it feels like what we've seen in Palestine has just surmounted anything that I saw in Syria. I remember looking, I remember finishing a, a mural up in, in the fall and then 
it was just within days of the attacks when they started and I looked at all all these homes and all these uh, all these buildings just destroyed all this land just destroyed and it crushed me it just it just made me stop and just you know I was I was sort of like broken that whole day and I just knew I like what I was witnessing was nothing like I've ever seen from what I've been working on in the last you know more than 10 years at this point and you know I've been trying to have people understand what was happening over there you know at first I was really sort of uh, attacked for my views, you know, um, I was very vocal from the start, and I'd be attacked for it. It, it it's nice to see that, that the narrative has changed, um, and there's been, become a lot more of an understanding of why we, we are at where we are at, you know, there's so many of us, the whole point of it has always been just to make you and everybody understand that these are people just like me and you. These are people who care for their children just as much as you and I do. These are people who look like your, you know, who look like my neighbors when, you know, when I was in Syria. And these these are people who love and cry and have all the emotions no different from what we who we are and I think it's important to stop sort of seeing the differences between us and start seeing the similarities and then having an understanding well what would you do in that position what would you do if a random soldier shot your child just as he was playing just because he wanted to just because he was having a laugh with his soldier friends and that's what they do, you know. Uh, there's a whole culture that has been brainwashed into dehumanizing another population as animals, as 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 mongrels, as as people who are, uh, you know, back, you know, five hundred years from what they are, which is not true. You know, my pur- my purpose in my work has always been to show to uh, show you that that's not true. That's not who we are. That's not who my cousins were. You know, that's not who my family are. I've just always been trying to get you guys to care about people who look different or seem different than you are, because they're really not that much different if you really work to learn. And I would say that's what I've been trying to do. Just try to get you guys to care. And hopefully we're at a moment now where we have enough people who who do care, who do see human lives. And hopefully we can make a difference in that and change it.